Today we are going to learn about the future uh, space missions of India. So, in this let us look into the uh, future space missions. So, many earth observatory satellites that is news launch vehicles, crew vehicles, space stations and probes are lined up. Now, let us look into the one of the satellite that is OceanSat 3, GSAT 20 for communication by GSLV MK3 and GI Sat 1 for earth observation by it would be launched by GSLV MK2 and NISAR there is another uh, satellite that is a spectral imaging in collaboration with NASA we are going to launch this satellite and AHYCIS 2 that is an advanced hyper uh, spectral imaging. Uh, these are the satellites that are going to be launched by ISRO. Now, let us look into the another interesting uh, thing is that is Gaganyaan. Gaganyaan is an India's indigenous uh, space mission to take humans into space by 2022 or oh, it was initiated in 2018. So, what is the significance of this humans sending humans into the space? The background of the space is that the colonization and space as a, a great force in the future. There might be a colonization of this space by humans and uh, so this space can become a sort of great force for us. In the US, we all know that in the US, the private companies like uh, SpaceX by Elon Musk pursuing to colonize this Mars itself. So, in 2004, human space flight program initiated there. So, in India also, we are also having a Gaganyaan as a mission to send humans into the space. Uh, this, it was finalized in 2007. Prime Minister announced the mission on August 15, 2018 in his Independence Day speech. Now, let us look into this details of this program mission. The giant, it is a giant venture of a department of space that is ISRO, DRDO and HAL that is Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. So, this, this is a joint venture of these three departments. So, what DRDO would do here is DRDO would supply space grade food, crew health care uh, and fire suppression system, emergency exit etcetera. Here when a human being enters into the space, he will be staying there for a long time even for a long time means uh, we, he has to take food that food is a uh, uh, requires and a special uh, food is required you know when you uh, take food there you uh, waste disposal that is produced by the humans also a big problem so in order to avoid uh, in order to minimize these things the space grade food is manufactured specially so and the uh, crew healthcare is also very important uh, when you go to the space the entire atmosphere changes there you know human body will have a specific temperature a specific pressure all these things are required in the space also so when you go into the space you will be actually working under a microgravity or the gravity is very less so there uh, human body behaves differently in order to take care of that human health the crew health is also taken care in order to do that, the DRDO would supply this crew healthcare related issues, will take redo research and will do solutions to take care of the crew health there. And again, the fire suppression systems. You know, the when the uh, satellite is sent into the space, the satellites would go at a, a higher speed, at a speed, at a speed that would actually create around 3000. Uh, degree centigrade temperature and then uh, you know this in order if anything happens in that uh, satellite in that uh, uh, mission that crew where the crew stays. So, the, there is a higher chance that the fire will uh, you know can come can you know come at any time. In order to suppress this fire we need to have a special systems that would suppress this fire. So, this fire suppression system is also supplied by DRDO and there is an emergency exit 
emergency exit is a very very important uh, part in any uh, missions you know human we are talking with the human lives if even a small mistake would actually cost the human lives so in the event of that emergency situations we should have the emergency exit uh, uh, solutions further the drdo is coming up with the emergency exit solutions so apart from this hal is also contributing for the crew modules we all know that hal is actually into the uh, you know uh, fighter jets and uh, aeroplanes like that since this is a it it is into the aeroplanes and aer manufacturing aeroplanes so fighter jets we all know that lca is manufactured by hal so in order to, since the using this expertise the hal is actually uh, designing this crew modules crew modules means the crew that would actually stay in that particular uh, modules so for that this hl is a, since it's a, using his past experience in designing the uh, lcas and other uh, you know various uh, uh, military grade uh, 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 military grade uh, uh, jet fighter jets so this expertise will help them in designing the crew modules so the mission will be launched in three stages that is unmanned launch in december 2020 unmanned launch in july 2021 and then unmanned launch in december 2021 now let's look into this and in pursuit of this isro has been testing technologies like space capsule recovery equipment and crew atmospheric reentry experiment and then a reusable launch vehicle technology demonstration that is also called rlv td so gslv mk3 and so on uh, these are the things now let's look into the space capsule recovery equipment you know that when a space vehicle takes a crew into the space then we have to take that back also so we have to take that back also means we should have that capsule recovery equipment which is actually recovers the equipment from the space capsule that we are sending so apart from this when the crew enters into the atmosphere it actually has it requires a special uh, reentry experiment is required for this a special modules are required when a space st uh, station uh, when a satellite enters into the reenters into the atmosphere it actually comes with a huge uh, velocity with a, with a high velocity when a, any uh, satellite or any object comes at a speed of high speed you can imagine even a free fall will have a 9.8 meters uh, per second and it actually comes with a space satellite that is entering into the uh, into the earth will actually comes at a very very high speed when this comes with a high speed we need to take care of the crew that is there in that satellite so this for this they are providing this a uh, care module technologies and there is an another a reusable launch vehicle also required when you take a launch vehicle we all we have extensively discussed about the launch vehicles when the launch vehicles takes the satellite into the space space and then it has to take that back also so that means we need to have a reusable launch vehicle also so in order to have this reusable launch vehicle we need to have this technology demonstration so uh, gslv mk3 is also one where we will be using because gslv mk3 is nothing but cryogenic engine that we are using there in january 2019 human space flight center that is uh, was inaugurated uh, within this isro headquarters so dr unni krishnan nair is the founder director of this human space flight center and v r lalithambika who spearheaded this pslv c3 is the mission director for this human space flight center in january 2020 isro unveiled humanoid robot 
Vyomitra to assess the Vyomanauts for ambient settings and orbital period. So Vyomanauts is a, it's a, a Vyomanauts is nothing but uh, the people who enter into the space are called Vyomanauts in Indian uh, word. So when a human goes into the space, space requires a special, we all, we are, we have, have been discussing about this, that the humans required a press, a specific ambience, a specific atmospheric pressure, specific environment is required. So for that, a human robot, not, humanoid robot will actually, will help this, assist this uh, Vyomnaats for setting up this ambience and also during this orbital period. The cost estimated for this mission is uh, 10,000 crores. The mission seeks to transport three Indian Vyomnaats to low earth orbit of around 300 to 400 kilometers for five to seven days, which means uh, three Indians will actually go into the space at an altitude orbit of 300 to 400 kilometers from the earth and they will stay there for five to seven days and after that there would be a written flight of 36 minutes to bay of bengal you see in 36 minutes the people uh, those uh, vyomnaats would come to the earth from 300 to 400 kilometers so with this the india would become the fourth country to achieve this feat along with USA, USSR and China. So the mission is collaborated uh, with Indian Air Force and the Institute Air Fo Airspace Medicine. Four pilots of this IAF being trained in Gagarin Research and Test Cosmonaut Training Center in Russia. So India is developing own astronaut training center at Chalakire Chitradurg district for next three years. Do you know who was the first man in space? That is Yuri Gagarin. Of course, Indian is a, Rakesh Sharma is the first Indian to be in that. Uh, this uh, 1984 as part of this intercosmos through Soyuz T11 he went there. And Yang Loi, October uh, 2003, he is a Chinese, he was the first Chinese to enter into the space. So, what are the major challenges? to send the humans into the space. The human conditions for space travel in microgravity and huge radiation. So we all know that the sun actually, you know, uh, radiates a huge radiation into the earth. The atmosphere actually fil filters this radiation and sends those that radiation which will actually conducive for the humans to live on the earth. Well, since you are going out of this uh, earth's atmosphere, so this hu humans, whoever goes there will actually face a huge radiation. The human actually is not meant for, you know, facing this kind of uh, radiation. In order to face this, especially artificial, this uh, uh, different radiation conditions and the human needs to train that. So, for that human have to maintain a conditions in a in that module that would be uh, as it is in the on the earth to the maximum extent as we all know that there would be any gravity or very micro gravity very very less gravity is there there the earth conditions would be different so in order to do in order to sustain that human conditions have to be uh, you know that module have to be prepared so that the human will have the least uh, differences in that. So for that, we need to have this uh, special uh, care, create the special conditions, and we have to create that, uh, design those modules in such a way that we'll have a very less differences between what is there in the human on the earth and what is there in the space. And then apart from that, humans have to be have to have a special training and fineness. So any simple mistake can cause entire the mission failure and the death of these astronauts. See this a zero mistake is what we need to achieve there.
because for that you need to have a special a rigorous training is required for this and then we need to have the escape strategy and pad about tests see if you want to enter into the space you need to achieve that escape strategy also so when you escape the earth's atmosphere you need to come to that earth again for that you need to have a different strategy and then pad about test that you have to conduct so these are the main challenges that you need apart from this we need to see that the investment and modular cost so every modules that we cost every investment that we make the uh, government should also keep that investment ready so that they will design this uh, these things on time apart from this we do have collaboration with foreign space agencies the united states ussr that is russia they went to uh, the space that uh, taken this humans into the space their expertise will certainly going to help us so that we can avoid any uh, failure mission failures so for that we need to collaborate with them and collaborating with the foreign space agencies is another challenge because it actually requires the transfer of dual technologies which is we call this dual technologies means the technology that is used for peaceful civilian purposes as well as the technology that is used for military purposes so not every country would transfer collaborate with ready to collaborate with india for that so we need to have a collaboration with the foreign space agencies and that also another challenge and apart from that there is another a diversion of this 10000 crore from main stream economy so we all know that the india uh, when the budget is allocated and they might be diverted for other purposes also so this is an another challenge that we need to overcome so what is the significance of this gaganyaan the manned mission in microgravity will have this wide spread applications in health animal sciences biotechnology material science defense etc so if we all know that that many technologies were results of the space research like telemedicine that is robotic surgeries are actually the results of this uh, space missions manned missions the advances in laser surgery water purification etc are also the spin off technologies of this research that is done in order to send this man into the space so we all know this biotechnology material science material science we need a special materials to send the space craft you know the satellite into the orbit for that we need a special material in re- doing this research we have found out different different materials for that the same material that we are using for this uh, uh, defense also so all these things are very important uh, spin off technologies apart from this this augment actually a science and technology development of country as 60% of the sourced from private sector itself for example the micro gravity platform can be experimented for new technologies for new technologies like uh, we all know that there is a one uh, in hyderabad itself there is a one uh, a zero gravity is there where you will actually experience that free fall in this that is actually taken from the russia russian technology it is actually a, a entertainment purpose they have uh, established in hyderabad itself where we can experience this micro gravity uh eher itself and apart from that we all know that the economic activities like employment hrd human resource development industrial capabilities would be benefited as this most of the people are engaged in the research and development of this they will also get employment this will also human resource development would take apart from this the social benefits will actually get that that spin off technologies this technology while doing this technology we also have a spin off technologies that are helpful in agriculture health etc so communication even safety and waste management these are all the uh, most of the technologies while developing the tech sending this doing this research we have developed lot of technologies all these technologies are used in this 
agriculture, space, communication, safety, waste management, etc. Apart from this, we also have the national pride and institutional growth as a multiple agencies like ISRO, academic, industry and national agencies are involved in this that actually give that national pride. So, it is not it a great thing to achieve, it is only the fourth country in the world on the globe to send a human onto the space. It is obviously a great fright for us. The further, the Gaganyan would put India on global map of space diplomacy and international collaboration apart from inspiring the next generation. So, who knows the Elon Musk, another uh, next generation Elon Musk might come from India itself. The space science and exploration, now let us look into this another future missions. India's space program encompasses the research in areas like astronomy, astrophysics, planetary and earth sciences, so atmospheric sciences and theoretical physics. So, this uh, we have sent balloons, sounding rockets and split for space platforms and ground based facilities support these research efforts. So, a series of a sounding rockets are available for atmospheric experiments. The several scientific instruments have been flown on satellite especially to direct a celestial X-ray and gamma ray bursts. So, one of that is AstroSat. AstroSat is the first dedicated Indian astronomy mission aimed at studying the uh, celestial sources in X-ray, optical and UV spectral bands simultaneously. The payloads cover the energy bands of this ultraviolet rate that is near earth as well as far ultraviolet rays, a limited optical and X-ray regime that is 0.3 kilo electron volt to 100 kilo electron volts. So, we all know that the sun emits a radiation and that radiation consists of various radi radiation that is a UV radiation, X-rays, all these kinds of radius that the uh, normal uh, what we see this uh, uh, what we see this radius is only a part of the sun that em uh, radiation that sun emits. Apart from this uh, visible uh, light, the sun also emits this X-rays, uh, UV spectrons, all these things. So, in order to study the nature of the sun, we will actually study the light that is radiated from this sun. So, this radiated uh, light that actually is in the form of x-rays, in the form of optical and other UV spectral bands. So, if you study these uh, things, we can actually study the sun's nature and the sun's behavior also. So, this Artstro start with a lift off mass of uh, 1550 kg was launched on September 28, 2015 into a 650 kilometer orbit as inclined at an angle of 6 degrees to the equator by PSLV C30 from the Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sri Harikota. The minimum useful life of this AstroSat mission is expected to be 5 years, that is the minimum thing. So, apart from this, there is an another important mission is that is Mangalyaan 2. So, Mangalyaan 2, it would be a future only orbiter, no lander rover mission and where we will be sending this a satellite to revolve around the moon and then around the Mars. This Chandrayaan 3 is the another most probably it would be include the lander and the rover along with orbiter. The moon mission is necessary for resources water and space colonization as also the moon can be a good station for future space exploration. So, we all know that the Elon Musk is trying to send uh, people onto the uh, moon you know in the next 50 years, 100 years we might go into the moon like uh, we will go to the another uh, you know Uti, Goa like that we might go into the moon also. So, if you want to do that, if you want to colonize the space there, we should also have the technology to send the people, to send the satellites onto the moon also. 
So, if you want to do that, we need to check that, that you know, if there might be resources that are there on the moon can also be help, help us for the future. So, we all know that rare earth metals are very important uh, in the semiconductor industry, which are very rare earth metals. So, we might find the rare earth metals in the moon, on the moon and if you, if you find the rare earth metals on the moon, there might be some sort of a transportation, you know, extraction, extracting the rare earth metals on the moon and then bringing that back to the earth. So, these kind of things also might happen in the next 50 to 100 years, maybe in 10 or 50 years or 10 or 15 years also, we do not know what. So, further, you know, if you to make ourselves ready, we should also do these experiments. That is why we are doing this Chandrayaan 3 kind of experiments. And there is an another important thing is that is Shukrayan. Shukrayan is another uh, due to similarity in size, density, composition and gravity. The Venus is described as Earth's twin sister. Some theories suggest that the both planets share a common origin. However, the Venus has a much higher solar radiation. The purpose of this Shukran would be to explore the effects of solar flares and study the atmosphere of the Venus. We all know that the primary, primarily the v atmosphere of the Venus is made up of carbon dioxide. The ISRO intends to send an orbiter mission only with this Shukrayan. And there is an another important thing is Exposat. It is a follow up, it is a follow up of follow up to Astrosat mission. It will actually further explore the bright X rays sources in the universe. So, it will actually also observe the neutron stars, supernova, and region around the black hole etcetera. So, this actually takes the uh, various uh, light that comes out from this uh, supernova and the black holes and then neutron stars and then they study that. So, that to, it would under, it will help us understand this black holes, it would understand the supernova, it would understand the help us understand this uh, neutron stars. Now, let us look into the launch vehicles. We all know that small satellite launch vehicles that is a 500 kg small missions which has four stages a three solid and one velocity trimmer and then we also have reusable launch vehicle technology demonstration and then there is an another uh, uh, you know a unified launch vehicle that uh, with the modular architecture to replace PSLV and GSLV MK3 and MK2 and MK3 with a single line of Victor engine. So, Victor engine is the engine that we are going to develop for this. And there is an another launch vehicle that is super heavy launch vehicles, which would be around 50 to 60 ton uh, launch vehicles, where it can take 50 to 60 tons of uh, payload. So, the what are the feature launchers of India? That is RLV TD, that is a technology demonstration, we will call TD. The reusable launch vehicle uh, technology demonstration is one of the most technologically challenging endures of ISRO towards developing this essential technologies for a fully reusable launch vehicle to enable low cost access to space. So, we all know that if you want to send humans into the earth, we should have the reusable launch vehicles also. Reusable launch vehicles will actually lowers the cost also. So, in order to, if you can do this, obviously reusable launch vehicle means sending a launch vehicle onto the space and bringing that back will actually uh, solve the major uh, problem of sending humans and then bringing them back is the major uh, problem that we are going to face. And if we can solve this, obviously we can solve many problems related to this, uh, you know, sending the humans into the space also. So, this RSLV TD consists of a fuselage that is a body, a nose cap, a nose cap is one that is on the, it is like a nose and then double delta wings and a twin of vertical tails. So, as it is shown here in this, it also features symmetrically placed active control surfaces called elevons and rudders. So, these are active control surfaces. So, this is what is looks like or is LV, TD. The selection of materials like special alloys, composites and 
insulation materials for developing this RSLVTD and the crafting of its part is very complex and demands a high skilled manpower. The objectives of this RSLVTD is hypersonic aero thermodynamic characterization of wing body evaluation of autonomous navigation, guidance and control schemes, this integrated flight management, a thermal protection system evaluation. So, these are the important uh, things that we will achieve. So, what are the achievements for this? The RSLVTD was successfully flight tested on May 23, 2016 from Satish Dhawan Space Center, Shastri Arikoda, validating the critical technologies such as autonomous navigation, guidance and control, a reusable thermal protection system and re-entry mission management. And there is an another important thing that is a, a space debris. Space debris em encompasses both natural and artificial uh, particles. The meteorites are in orbit about the sun while most artificial deb debris is in orbit about the earth. The term Kessler syndrome is associated with space debris uh, which is used to describe a self-sustaining cascading collision of the space de debris in LEO that is low earth orbit. The obstruction to various space endeavors are due to this debris. The NASA estimates that there are about 5 lakh, five lakh species of debris larger than half inch across in low earth orbit posing a potential danger to the 780 odd satellites operating in the area. So, debris is bound to increase because we are sending a space scientist concern is about this because we are sending inexpensive tiny satellites called CubeSats which are going to add space junk around 15 percent in the next 20 years. The initiative taken toward the space debris cleanup is there is a no international uh, treaty on space debris currently. To remove this uh, uh, debris, satellite platform will showcase uh, four methods for release, capture and debris to space debris targets called debris sat. The net capture, it involves a net uh, that will, act, will be deployed at the target CubeSats and there is an another harpoon capture which will be launched at a target plate made of a representative satellite panel materials. And there is an another important uh, vision based navigation using the cameras and lidar that is light detection and ranging the platform will send a uh, data about the debris back to the ground for processing and then the de, uh, de orbiting the process as it enters the earth's atmosphere the spacecraft will burn up leaving no debris behind the mission will demonstrate key activity key active debris active debris removal that is area technologies in orbit which will have significance for future missions as well. So, what are the India's, India's efforts for this mission Shakti which was launched recently was done in low orbit of less than 300 kilometers at a particular angle to ensure that thus minimal debris were dispersed above and to the space to avoid this damage to other satellites of the international space centers. The team of ISRO and uh, physical research laboratory are working on setting up an observatory to track the space junk. A multi object tracking radar developed by this Satish Dhawan Space Center allows ISRO to track 10 objects simultaneously. So, it tracks India's space assets and space debris for which the India was solely dependent on the data provided by the US Space Agency NASA till 2000, early 2016. So, thank you very much.